Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about VR, motion sickness and what helps me. So I guess the first thing I'm going to mention is what my experience of motion sickness is. Um, and for some, some people say it's all in the mind, it's not, it's a physiological uh, function of the body. Uh, some people suffer with it more than others, uh, but fundamentally, as I say, it is part of the body's reaction to uh, a particular form of movement or a particular set of circumstances. So I first encountered it uh, as an air cadet when I went for a, a flight in a chipmunk, and uh, yeah, I felt rotten afterwards. It felt really, really bad, and I really felt like I was going to be sick. You know, I hated it at fairground rides and that kind of thing. They just 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 made me feel awful never really enjoyed them so in a fit of wisdom i decided to join the fleet air arm as air crew uh, and my career was always going to be destined to fail on the basis that at that point i discovered i suffered from air sickness and sea sickness which was never going to be a good combination for navy air crew but persistence is the key because these things can always be a, a challenge that you can face down so first true flying course was uh, the basic observer course flying around in jet streams but it's safe to say during that course i had an absolutely horrendous time with air sickness on some flights filling two or three bags it was just not an enjoyable course in terms of air sickness the rest of the course was absolutely amazing but that thing really it battered me to be honest but at that point they decided in their wisdom to send me to the RAF School of Aviation Medicine which at the time was at RAF Farnborough and they flew hawks out of Boscombe Down and it was for the air sickness desensitisation course which uh, obviously I'd never heard of until they decided that that might be a possibility now as I say it was run by the School of Aviation Medicine and it consisted of two parts the first part was uh, being enclosed in various black boxes and then being thrown around so that your senses were overwhelmed by the motion but yet you couldn't see anything at all absolutely pitch black and i have to be honest it's not one of the most pleasant experiences you can have but it did lead into one of the most pleasant experiences i have one of the most enjoyable experiences was 50 hours in a hall and we started up from just you know getting airborne and doing a little bit of gentle handling to see how we go and gradually building up with every flight to more and more aggressive maneuvers and a wider range of exposure so aerobatics going down and doing low level nav being bounced around in the turbulence doing get uh, high g turns at low level and it came out with two lessons for me first is that persistence works the second is that frequent exposure does desensitize you so after that went back to sea kings and i found out another lesson the hard way in that my first course was advanced flying training and whilst i had at moments where i felt absolutely rotten i wasn't too bad on that at all to be fair however Subsequently, I had a large holdover, a long holdover between that and my operational flying training. And so by the time I got back into seeking, all that good work we'd done over the preceding couple of years had gone. And I felt sick as a dog again in that aircraft. But what it did allow me to do was to understand a little bit more about motion sickness. Um, and really to my mind, and this is not scientific, this is uh, my experience more than anything else. There's kind of two types of motion sickness. There's one where the body is just overwhelmed. So that's kind of you're going around on your roller coasters or you're going around on your various fairground rides. You can see what's happening. You know what's happening. Your brain can tell you you're going to go over the top of this loop. But your body is just too sensitive to that type of movement. And I guess it's uh, almost a, an overload of the sensory systems that it just can't cope with it and it makes you feel sick. But the second one is the interesting one from our perspective. It's a mismatch between visual cues and physical sensation. And in many respects, if you think about it, those are the two elements of the course that I went through. Being spun around in a black box was a mismatch between the visual cues and physical sensation. And I demonstrated through the course I could... Uh, adjust to that and the second one was flying around in the hawk where it was your body's ability to cope with the forces in terms of g-force rolling etc now obviously it's the black box one really that we are interested in here because if you think about it with our simulator we're strapping a moving world onto our head but our backside is firmly fixed in a chair not moving at all and so our senses are just going whoa what the heck is going on they're becoming overloaded and that's when you start to feel sick now, there'll be naysayers out there who say no no it's just down to a state of mind uh, you have to trust me here guys it's not it's not a state of mind it is a physiological response that is natural but unfortunately some people are uh, less tolerant of it than others you know your, your fighter pilots of the world even they can feel a bit rotten after their first trips back in the saddle for a while so the key now is there's five tips from me in terms of uh, motion sickness and how i've 
challenged it in terms of simming and I think it has to be a very pragmatic approach now the one I've not tried uh, in terms of simming but does work in real life is extra strong mints sucking on extra strong mints most fly instructors for the military that I encountered carried with them a packet of extra strong mints not because of the fact they like the mints although they might have done that's by the by but you quite often hear them go here blogs suck on this and things like mint and peppermint help believe it or not it can help i mean it's only temporary measure but it does potentially help now i've not tried it in simming but the fact that it works in real world would uh, mean that for me it's something that's worth trying you're not going to lose anything by trying it now the second big thing so if that's tip five tip four is room temperature temperature plays a big part in how you feel so much so that when we're flying around in the hawk we would have the air conditioning set so so low that we would have snow coming out of the vents and it does make a big difference because those who've suffered from motion sickness will know that one of the symptoms that you're really suffering is the fact that you become really hot uh, in terms of your body temperature, you start sweating, you get uh, cold and clammy skin as a result of your body trying to cope with it, and it's just not pleasant to be fair. Working our way up the list, we get to number three, stop as soon as you feel sick. There's no point persisting if you're feeling sick, just accept that that's the limit for today, that's as far as you can go. And one of the things that helps with that is not being tired. Believe me folks, the more tired you are, the more susceptible you're likely to be to these sensations overwhelming you. Number two on the list on our top five is start stable. I would always suggest this, don't go and have a play in your favourite rocket ship spinning upside down, left, right, wherever it may be. The reality is that's going to make you feel much sicker much more quickly. So start with something stable. Start with a Cessna 172 or an Airbus A320 which doesn't have a great deal of movement because then the mismatch between your, what your eyes are seeing and what your body is feeling isn't as great and it gives you a good platform to work from towards the more dynamic aircraft or the more dynamic manoeuvres. And my top tip is exposure and currency. I found through the flying courses I did in real world and also through the sim little and often is the trick and gradually expand the envelope so gradually extend the time or gradually work up to more dynamic aircraft and over time you can become really quite tolerant of it uh, as you see in some of the video footage I'm not hanging around and I flew these aircraft for in excess of an hour and a half without really feeling too much of an ill effect so if you've invested your 300 400 600 pound in a headset don't just get rid of it have a go persist see how you get on. So I guess the conclusion here is not to give in on it. Desensitization is a gradual process. It's something that can be done but it can feel very alien the idea of something that makes you sick continually returning to it and returning to it. But it's all about small steps, it's all about gradual exposure and it's all about learning to love the sim. But hopefully you guys found something useful in the video. If you did don't forget to tick like, share or subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.